Good evening and welcome to this special edition of Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Brianna Garcia. Thank you for joining us. Tonight we look back at stories involving transportation from an increase in ridership for buses to a new concourse for Sky Harbor Airport. Gas prices are dropping, but if you filled up your tank lately, you know that prices are still at a pain point. According to AAA, a gallon of regular gas averages $5 in Arizona. I took a look at how high prices at the pump are impacting public transit and whether more people are heading to their local bus or light rail. Public transit, an essential service for many traveling around the valley. But in recent months, riders say that buses and light rail are more crowded. Now people are starting to come back because of the gas prices that are going up. So we see more people coming on a bus than before. When the pandemic hit, many people quit riding public transit. Working from home became the new norm, and the need for public buses and light rail became less popular. Now people are coming back to work, and with gas averaging over $5 a gallon, public transit is an appealing option for more people. So when we compare our ridership this spring to looking at the spring one year ago in 2021, we've certainly seen an increase in ridership on both bus and rail. Compared to May 2021, Valley Metro says bus ridership has increased 17 percent, rail is up 38 percent, and Valley Metro's van pool program has seen an increase of 44 percent in May of 2022. We have seen an increase in people requesting our van pool program. You know, so we can attribute a lot of that to gas prices as well. It may not only be gas prices driving increased ridership. You know, during COVID, we were so low because of requiring essential trips only. So as you know, our economy is starting back up again, people are returning to work, we are seeing an increase in ridership. Valley Metro says that major events like fan fusion and sports games have brought people back. Still, Riders like Salvatore say prices at the pump are feeling the increase. So before COVID, the buses were 100% full every day. Now you see maybe 10% yeah, of the bus occupancy. But it's many reasons. It's not just the gas prices. Some people went back, work, started working remotely during COVID and didn't come back because they have that flexibility. But I would say most people coming back to the buses is because of gas prices. Valley Metro officials say that transit schedules were adjusted due to construction and pandemic guidelines, but as of this month, the schedules have returned to the pre-pandemic ones. Americans are spending more at the pump than ever before. In Arizona, gas prices are just under $5, almost $2 more than the same time last year. Rachel Fortunato tells us how to save money at the pump. According to AAA, gas prices have had a record high at the end of May, averaging $4.92 for a gallon of regular. In a conference call, representatives from the petroleum industry say gas prices are set by both consumers and suppliers. A combination of supply and demand fundamental, largely driven by the increase in demand uh, coming out of the pandemic. Arizona's average is even higher than the national average of $4.60 a gallon. Memorial Day is the start of the summer season. Many people will travel throughout the coming months. Aldo Vasquez with AAA Arizona says there are ways to save at the pump. Anywhere that you can save a couple of cents here and there is going to go a long way, especially when it comes to gasoline. So definitely looking for those rewards programs with a lot of those gas stations that can save you a couple of cents on a gallon. Vasquez also says keeping your car in good working order can save gas. And at these prices, every little bit helps. Rachel Fortunato, Cronkite News. Petroleum industry experts also say a shortage of truck drives to, the, to supply gas stations with fuel is adding to the increased prices. One local energy company is doing their part to help those affected by war in Ukraine. Valeria Rodriguez tells us about that as well as how they are teaching people to apply the necessary skills to help their communities using solar panel generators. These solar panels are being shipped across the world to help communities impacted by war. Tempe-based New Use Energy is collaborating with the Navajo Nation to create solar power generators to ship to Ukraine. They will be used in basically anyone who needs power, right? Whether it's a field hospital, uh, for communications, so anywhere they need power where, you know, the power is out, uh, they'll be able to use our equipment. 
There are four models of these solar panel generators. Once charged, they can power everything from laptops to appliances to hospital equipment. Most of the generators are easy to set up and move around. And the idea is to easily unfold it. These solar generators are being put together by members of the Navajo Nation. They're in Tempe to learn how to assemble the generators as part of a Navajo program to empower Native people through education. We look for partners to serve specific markets where they can assemble and distribute our products to serve their, their own communities. The women from Navajo Nation will be able to apply what they have learned to help their own community, where the solar generators are already being used. These are really good people to know. This is a good connection to have to be able to provide those things to our community. One shipment of solar generators has already made its way to the war-torn regions of Ukraine. In Tempe, Valeria Rodriguez, Cronkite News. Another eight pallets of solar panels and generators are expected to ship out this week to help in Ukraine. Cronkite News provides students at ASU's Walter Cronkite School of Journalism with the opportunity to gain real-world experience in the newsroom. At Cronkite News, our students produce professional content for audiences by taking on all roles, whether they be reporting, anchoring, producing, or studio production. Each department gives students first-hand professional newsroom experience. For more information, visit cronkitenews.azpbs.org. It's prime time on your time. Watch Prime Afternoons every weekday on Arizona PBS. Did you miss a show in the evening? Then catch up on Prime Afternoons. Your favorite dramas. No more bloody heroics. Antiques Roadshow. Really? <laughs> Nature and Nova. It's time to reintroduce some wonder into this miracle of nature. All of the best from PBS on Prime Afternoons. Weekdays starting at 1.30, only on Arizona PBS. Watch Arizona PBS any way you want, on air and online. Download the PBS video app to stream your favorite PBS programs anytime you want. And you can even watch Arizona PBS live, wherever you are, right from our website at azpbs.org. Don't forget about all your favorite PBS kids shows too, on the PBS kids video app. Watch Arizona PBS, your way today. A thrill to do this. Let's start having some fun. You can do anything. Experience something personal. A place of imagination. I can go anywhere I want to go. There's something for everyone with Passport on the PBS video app. If your summer vacation plans include flying, then you might be traveling through Phoenix Sky Harbor's newest concourse, which opens today. Cronkite News reporter Jessica Herrera gives us a glimpse of what passengers could experience. The concourse cost $310 million and features state-of-the-art technology, including windows with variable tinting that adjust with the sunlight. And accessibility was also an important part in the design. We're enhancing accessibility solutions. There's going to be a hearing loop that allows customers with hearing devices to connect to the airport PA system so they'll be able to hear the announcements more easily. Phoenix Mayor Kay Gallego and other politicians unveiled the new terminal. In a press conference, U.S. Representative Greg Stanton said the airport is an economic engine that supports Arizona tourism and trade industry. It connects local businesses to the global market and brings billions into our local community. The 275,000 square foot space features eight gates that will serve customers. The concourse design features Arizona themes, including a ceiling based on the imperial sand dunes. It has 118 baffles that are made of recycled plastic water bottles. Bob Jordan, Southwest Airlines CEO, says he is grateful the project moved forward during the pandemic. A lot of things were shut down uh, because that was the only answer was to stop projects. We didn't do that with this one. And the view from the plane won't be the only sight travelers will get to see as local artwork is featured throughout the terminal. 
In Phoenix, Jessica Herrera, Cronkite News. Arizona ranks high as a dangerous state for bicyclists, according to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. But a team of engineers and students at Northern Arizona University want to make cycling safer with a sensor that picks up on dangers, according to Cronkite News' Atria Maneshni. A sensor. That is the brain of the, the whole system. To revolutionize biking safety. We're going to see a change right here is coming out of an engineering lab at NAU. A dedicated team of students have been working on these sensors since last year. Like on a weekly basis, we probably spend like 10 hours a week at least working on it. The idea started back in 2018, when vehicles with safety technology were becoming popular. The engineering team decided to try similar technology on a bicycle. So that's what we thought that would be a good opportunity for us to start a project that we study how do we connect those bicycles together to build a network for cyclists. The students did hands-on work to figure out how to develop efficient sensors. Also coming up with the layout for the system container was pretty fun because we had to figure out how to uh, optimize it so it was space efficient and there's no like overheating with any of the components and stuff. So Figuring all this out is meant to make cycling more enjoyable and safer. Cycling in the U.S. isn't a common way to commute, but here in Flagstaff, about 8% of people use bikes to get around. We kind of have this uh, category of bicyclists that we call uh, interested but concerned, or maybe they're interested in, in using a bike, but they don't, if they don't feel safe on the facility, they, they likely won't. The bike sensors could help. Each sensor identifies potential hazards and detects bumps in the road. So if there's a crack or like a stick that you run over, uh, it has an X, Y, and Z axis, so however you run over it, those axes will change. By running some initial tests, the students have found that... So this is a pretty rough road. There are lots of cracks in the bike lanes in the Flagstaff area. The sensors are paired with a mobile app, and once the hazard is detected, the cyclist will be notified of its location so they can avoid it and ride safely. We're doing this project to show people where is a bomb so the government or the clients will know there is a bomb they need to fix or there's a very big bomb so you need to watch out. Ho and his team hope that cycling becomes a safe and popular form of transportation with this technology. If we can provide safer informed cycling environment that the people are willing to use cycling as their daily transportation mode. In Flagstaff, Atria Maneshni, Cronkite News. The next steps for these engineers are to create a prototype bike and potentially manufacture it in the future. Top Gun Maverick is skyrocketing at the box office, and according to IMDb, it has grossed over $900 million worldwide since being released at the end of May. Cronkite News reporter Madison Thomas met the aerial coordinator who made this film come to life. The blockbuster film is already one of the most popular movies of the summer. The movie's use of aircraft and aerial scenes sets it apart from other movies. But if you're thinking this was all done through CGI, I talked to someone who will tell you it wasn't. Scenes from Top Gun Maverick like this one look real because it is actually real. One of the people responsible for making this happen is pilot Kevin LaRosa. Know that every time we see a jet or anything, on camera in Top Gun Maverick, there's a real aircraft there. Every time we see a cast member in a cockpit, they are in an F-18 doing those maneuvers. LaRosa is a third generation pilot and second generation aerial coordinator and stunt pilot. He was learning how to fly at an age when you may have been learning how to drive. He grew up following in the footsteps of his idol, his dad. Even if he wasn't my dad, I would look up to this person and go, man, I want to do what he does. Uh, and that gave me this drive in life to do that. Throughout his career, he has worked on films including Transformers The Last Night, The Avengers, and Iron Man. But this one raised the bar. The crew strived for perfection. A huge testament to Tom Cruise and the Paramount team for going through the expense and the effort to train the cast. Our cast literally basically had to learn how to fly. Uh, we started them into this training program that Tom was uh, driving. The film was originally set to be released a couple years ago, but the COVID-19 pandemic got in the way of that. Larosa says this is a movie that was made to be watched on the big screen with the surround sound. I've sat in movie theaters and I've watched grown men cry. I've watched people spill their popcorn and cheer. That is the best feeling in the world. That's all the crew's blood, sweat, and hard work 
on the big screen being delivered and people receiving it in the way they are. Lou Rosa says the film has a natural progression and continuously gets more intense. The final sequence of the movie is his favorite. It looked as epic and dynamic and crazy to me sitting in the pilot seat of the camera jet and camera helicopter as it does on the big screen. We talked to LaRosa's dad and he says he could not be more proud than his son. His son has become better than he could ever be. In Los Angeles, Madison Thomas, Cronkite News. If you do heavy lifting for a living, there's a new product that might make it easier. Engineers in Phoenix have developed new wearable technology they hope will improve workplace safety. Something as light as eight pounds could be the future in helping those in highly physical work fields. Engineers from the Wear Tech Applied Research Center in Arizona State University have partnered up in creating an exoskeleton that will alleviate the amount of force the body has to absorb. It was a device that we actually built and tested on aerial porters at the Air Force at Traverse Air Force Base. So it was a really great project because we built, designed something, and then actually tested it over eight weeks at the Air Force. This summer, the organization is going to test out on other groups of people that tend to have back straining work, like Amazon warehouse workers and field workers. Every year, more than $31 million is being spent on disability benefits for retired aerial porters. The exoskeleton is designed to lower that cost. Expect a massive reduction in uh, back injuries, shoulder injuries, and um, that will keep people working longer, they'll be more productive, and they'll have a better um, lifestyle. The exoskeleton is projected to expand the Phoenix and Maricopa County economy by creating more technology companies such as WearTech. The analysis that we did of the state funding shows that the, the state government's return on investment will be 8 to 1 over a 10 year period. Although this device has only been tested over an eight week trial, engineers are hoping to see tangible results in the next 10 years. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thanks for joining us. Break It Down is next. For top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org.